Let's turn to video six, decycloserine, potential indications and administration in children and adolescents. Here's another example of a compound, decycloserine, that generated a lot of excitement, had tremendous promise. Some of it may have been realized, but some is still a work in progress, as we'll discuss. This was originally introduced as an antibiotic to treat tuberculosis. Decycloserine has also been observed to possess anti-anxiety properties. It's a partial NMDA agonist at the glycine modulatory site, which facilitates the opening of calcium channels attached to NMDA receptors and appears to have a role in the neural activity underlying learned associations and extinction of fear. However, decycloserine only shows an extinction effect when paired with behavioral training and not when given alone. This is very important that this particular compound, decycloserine, is not a standalone medication and doesn't seem to be effective necessarily with other medications. It seems to have its most potency in concert with a behavioral intervention, as we'll describe in detail momentarily. Potential indications, the anxiety disorders are a natural area where decycloserine would be tried. And evidence from research both in animals and adults suggests that decycloserine may in fact augment the effects of behavioral therapy in children and adolescents with anxiety disorders. But findings from three large-scale reviews and meta-analyses of 29 open-label trials and randomized control trials of decycloserine administration relative to placebo for cognitive and behavioral therapy augmentation for children and adolescents with anxiety and related disorders, that was OCD, PTSD, found only minimal benefit. Notably, these reviews also identified a lack of consistency across studies related to methodologies and outcome measures, as well as a failure to incorporate potential optimization strategies identified during studies in adults, which limited the ability to make reliable conclusions or draw meaningful comparisons between studies. So this is where looking at subgroups, differences in the methodology, the patient population can really make it hard to compare different studies. Despite these mixed results from current trials, which have yielded small and inconsistent effects, there is some evidence that decycloserine may enhance exposure therapy in young people. Future research on decycloserine is needed, though, to clarify mechanisms and disentangle its effects across disorders and should include consistent study conceptualizations, methodologic approaches, and outcome measures to enable more meaningful comparisons. Now, as a potential indication for obsessive-compulsive disorder, this had tremendous promise and is another example where there was incredible excitement about how decycloserine may become part of the armamentarium in treating OCD. Several studies have examined decycloserine augmentation of cognitive behavioral therapy in children and adults with OCD, but again, the results have been mixed. Three randomized controlled trials in OCD youth found no significant effect of decycloserine on OCD severity. Although patients taking decycloserine did experience moderate symptom improvement compared to placebo on the children's Yale-Brown Obsessive Compulsive Scale, the CGI severity and ADS-CSR, Additionally, one randomized control trial found greater sustained improvement in the children's Yale-Brown Obsessive Compulsive Scale scores in the decycloserine group compared to the placebo at one month post-treatment. There was one study that did observe significantly faster rate of treatment progress at the midpoint of the study in patients receiving decycloserine, and we know that it takes the SSRI is often a while to be effective 
in obsessive compulsive disorder. So hastening or making more rapid the response to treatment is obviously beneficial in this condition. So decycloserine may accelerate the therapeutic effect of cognitive behavioral therapy in OCD patients, and the greatest treatment effect may be limited to unmedicated cases. So obviously very important that the response with this agent may not be as good if a patient is on traditional medicines used to treat OCD, such as the SSRIs, but in unmedicated patients, this may be an attractive option to accelerate the treatment effect. These studies do provide additional support of the potential for decycloserine for OCD, but additional research is needed to further elucidate exactly which OCD patients might benefit the most from decycloserine augmentation. Autism Spectrum Disorder Early studies in this area were very compelling, suggesting a possible benefit for decycloserine as a monotherapy in autism spectrum disorder, with up to 40% of patients showing improvement on the clinical global impression improvement scale, and nearly 60% demonstrating improvement on the ABCC. A randomized controlled trial in high-functioning youth with autism spectrum disorder examining the efficacy of decycloserine plus peer-mediated social skills group intervention found decreased social deficits, although between-group treatment effects were not significant. A follow-up randomized controlled trial in children with autism spectrum disorder receiving short-term social skills intervention also found participants receiving weekly adjunctive decycloserine experienced significantly increased benefit that was sustained three months after treatment. Thus, decycloserine appears to support maintenance of social skills gains made during short-term group therapy compared to placebo. These results, I think, are particularly significant given that previous studies have noted a lack of treatment durability following social skills intervention in autism spectrum disorder. So this would be a huge advantage if this is replicated. And in fact, we do find that decycloserine augmentation leads to the durability, rather, of short-term group therapy gains. Although current research is limited, findings from current research support additional studies to examine the potential efficacy for adjunctive use of decycloserine in autism spectrum disorder. Post-traumatic stress disorder. Although cognitive behavioral therapy has been associated with significant reductions in PTSD symptoms, results from a randomized controlled trial found little evidence supporting adjunctive decycloserine treatment in youth with post-traumatic stress disorder. Therefore, while decycloserine adjunctive treatment with CBT appears effective for some anxiety disorders, current evidence does not support its use in youth with PTSD. Dosage and administration in decycloserine. In children and adolescents, most studies employed weight-adjusted dosages between 25 and 50 milligrams that were administered 30 to 60 minutes before exposure therapy. The good news is that decycloserine appears to be very well tolerated in children and adolescents with few side effects. The most commonly reported side effects are headache, irritability, and depression. A rare but potentially serious side effect such as psychosis and convulsions have also been reported. The key take-home points here are that decycloserine has been observed to possess anti-anxiety properties. However, decycloserine only shows an extinction effect when paired with behavioral training. Despite mixed results from current trials, which have yielded small and inconsistent effects, there is some evidence that decycloserine may enhance exposure therapy accelerate the therapeutic effect of CBT and OCD, and support maintenance of social skills gains during group therapy in autism spectrum disorder. 
Additionally, while decycloserine treatment with behavioral therapy appears effective for some anxiety disorder, current evidence does not support the use of decycloserine in youth with post-traumatic stress disorder, 